What is facet joint syndrome? Patients very often feel spinal pain and they're diagnosed with something called facet joint syndrome. And many times patients don't know what that is. Facet joints are joints within the spine that help connect vertebras to above and below and allow the spine to actually move properly. They have cartilage on the surface of each joint and they're adjacent to prevent friction to each other. Each joint is encircled by fluid to allow each joint to smoothly move and function. So when you look at facet joints, they help facilitate each spinal segment. When we look at spinal segments, we have a bone, and we have a, a disc below it. And then in the back aspect of the vertebral bodies, we have something called facet joints, and they're called posterior paired facet joints. So these facet joints help make a three joint structure, the disc joint and the facet joints. And these are the three most common uh, joint structures that we deal with throughout the, throughout the spine. Now, some joints or some bones in some areas of the spine have some different joints that are associated with, but three, these three are the big movers or the big ones inside the, the spine. Each individual segment influences the health of other segments. So therefore, you can't just have a bad L5 because L5 will affect L4 and sacrum. You can't have a bad T6 because T6 will affect T5 and T7 because T6 is the joints are shared with above and below each segment. So facet joints, unfortunately, can develop something called facet joint syndrome, and this is where facet joints can become degenerated and swollen. And this can happen really in any area of the spine. It can happen in the cervical spine, it can happen in the thoracic spine, it can happen in the lumbar spine. And they're all called, just by their area, cervical facet joint syndrome, thoracic facet joint syndrome, and lumbar facet joint syndrome. When we look at what causes facet joint syndrome, it's most likely caused by arthritis-like spinal conditions like osteoarthritis. Now, osteoarthritis or arthritis spinal conditions are normally very related to alignment, meaning when a spine's out of alignment, it will go through something called degenerative phases, which are things like arthritis and arth osteoarthritis. And what it means is that these areas have more weight and more pressure on them. Therefore, they're going through a degenerative phase faster than the rest of the spine, which causes them to deteriorate and become swollen and painful. Arthritis means arthro, which is the root word there, means joint. Itis means pain. So arthritis just means painful joints. Osteoarthritis means painful joints because the bones have gone through a deteriorative phase. It doesn't mean you've caught a disease. It's mean because your spine is not aligned properly. It's going through a degenerative phase, which is causing the spine or the joints of the spine to become painful and degenerative. It's very similar to like an unaligned car. If a car is not aligned properly, one tire will wear out faster than the others. And it's not because they have a bad tire or the tire has a disease. It's just because there's more weight and more pressure on it. Well, this same thing is true with your spine. When we look at facet joint syndrome, it's normally not just, it's not affecting every facet joint in your entire spine. So it's not a systemic disease or anything like that. It's normally one or two areas, normally only on one side of the spine because that's the side that has more weight and more pressure on it, which causes it to be more painful. Unfortunately, it can start not only functioning and moving properly, but it can start affecting the nerve endings that go through the spine and it can start affecting nerve problems. So the symptoms associated with facet joint syndrome could be very, very widespread. It could be a variety of symptoms based upon not only how the severity of this facet joint syndrome is, but also the degree of nerve involvement. So normally it's based upon the overall age, the overall health of the patient, the healthier the person is, the more likely to have minimal symptoms as a result of how unhealthy the person is. Um, the source of the degeneration, meaning where it's located, meaning cervical and lumbar facet joint syndromes to cause more issues than thoracic ones. And of course, the degree of nerve involvement. As those facets become more swollen, become misaligned, become degenerated, they can start affecting the nerve roots that exit the spine, which can lead to more nerve involvement, which can start affecting anything the nerve controls, which can lead to radicular pain, it can lead to functional issues because those nerves we know control every single thing. One of the most common symptoms is reduced 
range of motion, and stiffness. Normally difficult in rotation or twisting because in order for those facet joints, in order for you to twist, I'm sorry, those facet joints really have to move. So we normally see a difficult in twisting, a difficult in standing straight up, a straight up posture. We can see changes to gait that happens due to facet joint syndrome and a forward pitch posture because normally when you bend forward, especially in the low back facet joint syndrome, you can, if you bend forward, you try to alleviate some of that pressure. However, as you lean more forward, it causes more spinal misalignment, which can now lead to more disc degeneration. So one now problem causes another problem. So therefore correcting the alignment to stop the syndrome from continuing to worsen, to reduce the pain and stiffness that you're feeling, to get more of an upright posture is really the underlying goal. You just don't want to be standing in an abnormal posture because it feels better. We want to correct the cause to try to get you back into that normal aligned position. So therefore, you're not causing more issues to occur over your lifetime. Facet joint syndrome can be treated many different ways. But first of all is to determine the underlying cause. And the majority of the time, underlying cause tends to be related to alignment of the spine. Helping lifestyle, meaning weight, things that you're doing toxic to increase inflammation and so inflammation in the body can be done to help reduce pain and things that are happening at that time. Patients can use other therapies for pain relief like hot cold therapy. Even exercises can be done to help increase the strength of the body. But the bottom line is that if we don't improve the alignment of the spine, you may reduce the pain of the syndrome but you're not actually correcting the causation. Therefore, it's normally just gonna return and continue to mo affect multiple areas. So we normally re recommend trying to restore spinal alignment. The best way to re restore spinal alignment is using a chiropractic functional approach to help restore normal alignment to the spine using chiropractic therapies, chiropractic rehabilitations, and chiropractic home therapy to help provide the proper alignment to the spine to help prevent not only the syndrome from returning, but also correcting the cause of the problem so therefore your spine can be healthier. Preserving spinal health and function is very important. We know when it comes as people will age, the number one cause of disability currently Worldwide is low back, which is your spine. Number four is your neck. So obviously these are the two most common areas associated with facet joint syndrome. So therefore we wanna be proactively treating these problems and not let the facet joint syndrome create more issues where it affects more life functions as you continue, as the problem continues to age and get older and get more and get more serious. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you'd like to hear about other topics and information on scoliosis, type in the comments below and let us know. And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish content. Thanks.